visiting a high school the other day, and I was sitting in on a math class, and they were talking about geometry, and uh, lines, in, lines in particular. And um, the teacher basically started the class by drawing two lines, two parallel lines on the board, you know, with the, with the parallel signs, and asked the class where these lines intersect. And immediately, this kid at the front of the class puts his hands up and says, these lines are parallel, uh, they never intersect. And, um, and the teacher says, very good, that's true. Um, because the way to define parallel lines is that uh, the distance, the minimum distance between any two points on the line uh, is exactly the same no matter where you are. And I was sitting at the back of the class and I was thinking to myself, uh, that's not necessarily true. Um, although that is not incorrect to say parallel lines don't intersect, if you think in a different space, there is a way to make parallel lines intersect. In fact, there's an entire topic called projective geometry that dedicates itself to finding ways to make lines intersect. And uh, that's the point of this video, um, is to show everyone that there is a way to make parallel lines intersect. And uh, they intersect at a point called infinity, and today we're going to show you exactly how that works. Alright, so we're talking about projective geometry. But before we actually get into it, we need to go back to parabolas to really see why projective geometry is even useful. So I'm going to draw three situations that will really show us how projective geometry can be useful. So we got one there, the one over here, and the last one over here. Now, we can look over here and easily see that there's two intersection points with the x-axis. And this makes sense. This is a degree 2 polynomial. And by that, I mean the highest power is 2. And so, with a one-dimensional line, we, can, we would assume that there would be two intersection points, and that's true. And we look over in this situation, we only see one intersection point. But if we change the way we're looking at it, and say that y is equal to x times x, each of these x's could be 0, and we see we have two equal roots. And through a little bit more advanced way, we can actually see that this is true. So what we've seen so far is that there's always two intersection points. Now we look at the third situation, and there's absolutely no intersection points. But as I said, there should be some sort of pattern and uniformity across these situations. So we figure out that we're just looking at it in the wrong way. If we include complex numbers, we can consider uh, another solution. So this would look something like x squared plus 1, and we can factor this to x plus i, and x minus i, where i is square root of negative 1. You might remember this from high school. And this will really allow us to solve a whole new level of problems. And so we can see that really, no matter how we look at it, a parabola and a line will always have two intersection points. And this really, what I'm going for, is something called Bayesian's theorem, which says that any two curves will always have as many intersection points as the product of their degrees. And now that might sound really complicated, but really all it means is that, for example, a quadratic and a cubic must have six intersection points, no matter what. Two parabolas must have four intersection points, no matter what. And oddly enough, two lines, which each have degree one, must have one intersection point. So really, that last situation is where projective geometry comes in. So how can we apply Bayes' theorem for two lines in two-dimensional space? In 2D Euclidean space, two parallel lines visually never intersect. The trick to making these two lines intersect is to go one dimension higher, to take two-dimensional space and look at it from a three-dimensional perspective. This is what I mean. So say you have three-dimensional space, x, y, z. Take any plane, say add z equals to one, as your projective plane. And what I mean by projective plane is this is the plane that we can see. So pretend this is the piece of paper that's spaced in this room, and we can only see what's going on in this piece of paper. Any point on this projective plane say at A, we can define as a line that goes through the origin in three-dimensional space that intersects this plane at that point A. Here's a 3D interpretation. So here's your xy plane. Your z-axis is the one that's coming out from the table. And once again, we have our projective plane here. This plane here. Imagine a plane here. Any point on this projective plane we can define as a line that goes through this plane. You can see that, you know, any point here can be defined by this line. If you take a point here, and you take a point and you go stretch it further and further and further on this projective plane, this line gets more and more and more parallel to this xy plane until when it does actually become parallel. Then we can no longer see this point on the projective plane. However, a line still exists in three-dimensional space that passes through the origin. So a point must exist. And when this happens, we say that this point exists at infinity. And you can see that there are multiple infinities for multiple directions of this line that's on the xy plane. All right, so now that we know what a point looks like in projected space, let's talk about lines. So we have the x and y plane here. 
and the z-axis coming out of it. So we'll take our projected plane and slide it in. So now we have two lines over here. Let's just talk about one of them for now. So that line is going to go straight forever on both ends. And in a similar way with the points, we want to connect it to the origin. With the point, we connect it to it with the line straight from the origin to that point and going on forever. And that's what the representation was in printed space. But for a line, you know, it, it goes on forever, so we can't just use a line to connect it to the origin. We actually have to use a plane. So if the line was over here, then the associated plane would look something like this. It would intersect the origin, but also intersect the projected plane in the same line. And this means that if there was a line over here, then the plane would look something like this, and if the line was further out, the plane would be a little bit shallower, like this. Now let's go back and talk about our two parallel lines. So here they are. One is going to be a little bit closer to the origin, one a little bit further out. And they're associated planes. One of them would be something like this, and the other one a little bit further like this. Now what we can notice, actually you can use a folded piece of paper to show you this. If we put it out like this, we can see that this is the plane for one, point, for one of the lines, and here's the plane for the other line. They both come together, and they meet here at the origin in a line that's horizontal. And we talked earlier about how horizontal lines are actually points at infinity. So what we can see here is that there's going to be two parallel lines in projected space. They each would have an associated plane. Those two associated planes meet at the origin in a line that's horizontal, which is a point at infinity. And this is a comprehensive way of saying how two parallel lines intersect at infinity. Now another interesting case to look at, just to make sure that projective geometry works, is these two lines here. Now, clearly they intersect, and you don't even need to use projective geometry, but we can use it just to verify. So we'll put it back here, and we know that the intersection point is somewhere over here. Right? And they're each going to have their associated planes. So one of them is going to be angled sort of like this, and the other one angled like this. And if you can sort of imagine both of them at the same time, you'll be able to see that they actually do intersect in a line, except that line is no longer here along the x and y plane. It actually comes out, and it's sort of at this angle. And they will, that line, when it hits the projective plane, actually hits the exact point where the intersection happens. So projective geometry works not only for parallel lines, but actually works comprehensively for any system. So projective geometry really gives an answer, and a very comprehensive one, as to how parallel lines intersect at infinity.